Command engine start. Two, one, ignition. You're looking at Blue Origin's 10th space tourism flight taking off from West Texas Tuesday. The six-person crew launched into suborbital space on Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket and safely landed 10 minutes later. Derek Pitts joins us now for more. He's the chief astronomer for the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Derek, thanks for being here. So how did Tuesday's Blue Origin launch go and what's next for them? You know, they actually named this particular mission Perfect 10. That was the nickname for the flight. And in fact, the flight itself was a perfect 10. Everything went according to plan uh, up and down in 10 minutes. And I'm sure the, uh, the folks that went up had a great view of the Earth and space. I, I want to get to some, uh, a bunch of space news. Of course, here at Team TDR, we're, we're big space and astronomy geeks, as I'm sure you are self-proclaimed as well. Seven planets will be visible in the night sky for the last time until 2040 this week. What can you tell us? When is the best time to see them and where? These seven planets are visible in the evening sky after sunset. And of the seven planets, actually, there are three really bright ones, two that are very close to the sun, so they'll be a challenge, and two others that are really difficult to see, but you can at least know they're all there. The ones to concentrate on are Venus, the very brightest object you can see in the western sky just after sunset. Up a bit higher from Venus is the planet Jupiter, doesn't shine quite as bright, but it shines a steady glow. And that's how you tell the difference between planets and stars, by the way. And a little bit further over to the south is the reddish planet Mars. Those are the three to concentrate on. Uranus and Neptune are both there, but they're so far away. They're so dim. You can only really see them with binoculars or a telescope. And the last two... Saturn and Mercury are pretty close to each other, but they're down very close to the sun, right at the point of sunset. So they're lost in the glare of the sun. And I really wouldn't challenge anyone to try to get a look because the glare of the sun would be too bright for your eyes, but they're all there. You can watch those planets though, those three bright ones, for another few weeks over in the western sky, right after sunset, they're nice and bright. You can't miss them. And if you have a pair of binoculars, Pull them out and take a look, see what they look like. We love realistic and simple advice we can follow. I have to be so quick with you on this last one. We've heard about this city killer asteroid. Originally had a 3% chance of striking Earth. NASA says no longer a threat, right? Yeah, that's all over with now. You know, when we had the first observation of this asteroid, the information we had about the orbit was insufficient to give us a full profile of what the orbit was like. So there was a possibility, only 3% at maximum, that it could actually strike Earth. But with more information gathered, we've been able to figure out that this asteroid is not going to collide with Earth in 2032 at all. The orbit has been refined enough, the details of the orbit refined enough, that we now realize that there's a very, very small chance, extremely small, in fact, so small as to be non-existent. So... Wow. Breathe a sigh of relief. Put away your titanium umbrellas. We don't have to worry about getting struck by <laughs> titanium this Titanium umbrella. Are you selling those? I'm going to have to find the link. Derek Pitts, it has been such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.